support behind CBD products. But what are they and how do they work? We'll talk about it. Also tonight, you're thinking about booking a flight. Wouldn't it be neat if you could just send the airline a text and get your reservation that way? Well, that is coming for one airline. We'll tell you which one coming up. And the work underway to open Maine's first pet-friendly shelter for domestic violence victims. This is New Center Now. <laughs> I needed to recover. I was not in a good place. F football was t bringing me down, and I didn't like it. And I was losing that joy in life, like the joy. I'm sorry right now, but oh. <laughs> Dang. Very passionate Rob Gronkowski mm. there. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Mills. And I'm Lee Nelson. We begin tonight with New England's favorite tight end, all-around fun guy, Rob Gronkowski. But he was obviously showing another side of himself earlier today, a side fans really haven't seen as he recounts the physical pain he's endured for years as a professional athlete. So Gronk announced this morning he has entered the CBD industry. CBD is short for cannabidiol. It's a non-psychoactive compound found in the marijuana plant that is widely believed to help with pain and anxiety. Now Gronk is partnering with Abacus Health to launch a new line of CBD products because he says CBD has been a complete game changer for his overall health and well-being. Something we all and you all have been talking about all day. We'd like to know if you've ever used CBD. CBD. You can weigh in on pulse.newcentermain.com or scroll down to the Pulse section of our mobile app and answer the question. Absolutely. Sam York, meanwhile, is here with a quick overview of what happened and what this could mean for CBD businesses in Maine. Hey, Sam. Hey guys, yeah, so Gronk told reporters today that he was blown away by how well CBD products have worked for him. And I think it's safe to say fans were blown away by the announcement and to learn how much pain one of their favorite players was in working the field. So just a reminder, CBD comes from the cannabis plant but does not produce a high like marijuana. So same plant, different results. And it's now being used in a number of skin products, even edibles, to help specifically with things like chronic pain. Pain. So the three-time Super Bowl champion says he immediately incorporated the product into his recovery and has been enjoying the results. He's now advocating for other athletes who may be dealing with the same type of chronic pain, saying if he had been able to use these products while he was playing, things might have turned out differently for him. Now, as I mentioned, this is something that you guys at home have been weighing in on all day. Sawyer wrote in saying that a player of his caliber and Q rating could actually influence change in the stuck in the ways of the past NFL. So I think it's safe to say that with this publicity around CBD products today, main business owners could definitely see an uptick in their traffic. Um, there are already a number of local shops around the entire state that carry CBD products. One of our producers actually sent me a picture earlier. She was pumping gas at the gas station and there was a um, an ad for CBD oh, products yeah. right there on mm -hmm. the gas pump. So it's something people are clearly already using. If we look at our Pulse poll right now, it looks like 14% of you guys at home have said, yes, we're using it for pain. They just took it away. So I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> um, 14% said that you have used it. Looks like a few of you other guys have weighed in as well. So mm. keep that conversation going. Um, and then coming up at 6 o'clock, we're going to be talking even more about these CBD products, more about Grok's announcement and, you know, what this could mean for Maine down mm. the road. I bet if we did the same pulse poll in a month, in a year, mm -hmm. the numbers are going to go up and up and up. Yeah. This, is, this is becoming mainstream yep. for sure. Exactly. All right, Sam, All right. Thank you very Thanks much. Guys i got some other news for you, too. Six people reported in good condition at the hospital right now after falling ill from carbon monoxide poisoning on Monday afternoon. It happened at the new Dunkin' Donuts and Subway store on Route 27 in Booth Bay. The owner, Mike Connor, says when people started feeling sick, they ordered everybody out of the building. They called the fire department. Fire Chief Dick Spofford says the CO level inside the kitchen was 10 times higher than the level where firefighters will put on air packs. Connor says they discovered the switch to a vent hood fan over a cooking area had been turned off and all the outside doors were closed, so fumes built up pretty quickly. The store reopened later um, in the day. All right. With that, let's talk about the weather. Toss things over to Keith. Another 
I don't know, picture perfect it's nice. 10 out of 10 day, <laughs> Keith, what do you think? Yeah, really, really strong. I mean, these are the days that we, we kind of hope for during the middle of the winter, right? And even though we, I know you guys like it a little bit warmer. <laughs> Lee likes it a little warmer. Yeah, he yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> even Lindsay, still though, I mean, for, nice for where we are, yeah. Hard to beat it. Yeah. I think like four month Lindsay liked the heat and that <laughs> this this version Towards the end. Not as much. I'm That's, ready to go. So this is perfect <laughs> for you. Mid and upper 70s in a lot of spots, 60s right along the immediate coastline, 80 uh, right around the Bangor area and uh, Farmingdale as well at 80 degrees, 83 in Smithfield. We had a really big, uh, you know, morning low to afternoon high swing today as a lot of us started in the low 40s this morning. Satellite looking good, not much in the way of cloud cover at all. A couple of high thin clouds coming into western parts of Vermont and uh, New Hampshire. Those will move in overnight tonight, will go partly cloudy. But this this is our next storm system for tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and Thursday morning. Doesn't look like much right now, this front, but it will connect with some tropical moisture and start to bring down some really heavy downpours tomorrow night and into Thursday. So we start tomorrow and it'll be dry and in some places sunny, in fact, to start the day. Clouds start moving in though during the afternoon, temperatures in the mid and upper 70s, and then rain starts moving in on Wednesday night. And guys, as I mentioned, enough rain that we already have a flash flood watch in effect for parts of down East Maine. So we'll talk about uh, how that's all gonna play out in just a few. All right. Thanks, Keith. Looking at some more news headlines tonight. Will she or won't she? Governor Mills, will she sign the bill allowing ranked choice voting to be used in the presidential primaries in March? The Maine Senate voted 20 to 12 to approve it during a special session in Augusta yesterday. So the bill now heads to the governor's desk, but she hasn't yet said whether or not she will sign it. Maine Secretary of State Matthew Dunlap says this will likely cost an extra $100,000 to get the election systems ready for the change by March. This has been a big talker on social media today, and here are some of your comments below. Other news, remember yesterday we told you that world leaders at the G7 summit offered up $20 million to Brazil to help that country fight the fires burning in the Amazon rainforest. But today the president of Brazil, Jair Bolsonaro, said he won't accept the aid until French President Emmanuel Macron apologizes for comments he made about Bolsonaro. The Brazilian leader accused the richer countries in the G7 of treating Brazil like a colony and suggested that foreign powers wanted control of the Amazon. Macron and Bolsonaro actually have been feuding ever since Macron suggested the Brazilian leader wasn't taking climate change seriously and was letting the Amazon burn. Bolsonaro then fired back by insulting Macron's wife's appearance. More people are dying from preventable heart issues. That's according to a new study from Northwestern University. They studied data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention between 1999 and 2017. First, the good news, they found that deaths from stroke and diabetes declined in that time, but have since leveled off. Now the bad news, deaths from high blood pressure increased, especially among African Americans. Experts say most could have been prevented, though a healthy diet, exercise, and not smoking. While the study did not pinpoint a cause for the increase, the scientists say they believe the rise in obesity may be a factor. Hmm. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We've got much more coming up, including one airline trying out the idea of making a reservation by simply sending them a text. That could be very convenient, but at what cost, we'll find <laughs> out. Also, providing a safe space for domestic violence survivors and their four-legged companions, thanks to some help from a celebrity. That story later on Now. Cool. All righty. Where's we going? I think we Back are yep. at the monitor. Hey everybody, how's it going? Got to fire up Facebook. <coughs> um, Are we headed over there? I think so. Looks Let's like see. It. Yes. Inks monitor. D D D D. So yeah, what do you guys think about Gronk's announcement today? He I, was pretty know, passionate about it. Yeah, you know what's really interesting is so when you read it, like a lot of times we, we, s you know, a soundbite is a comment by somebody on camera, and when we see the verbatim, the words, you don't get the gist, right? And then you see it. So I read that and I thought, okay, but then yeah. I saw the emotional and you way see he his delivered eyes it. Oh watering. my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Really, really interesting. 
you know, say what you want about professional athletes. It is, there is something to be said about these people who dedicate their lives to doing a job that is physically oh, yeah. demanding. Um, you know, that goes for any physically demanding job, mm. really, you know, construction jobs, mm. that sort mm. of thing. Um, and if you can find something that helps you uh, carry out your career, you mm. know, or extend the life of your career, you know, then, then why not? Yeah, it's really, really interesting. <coughs> it's interesting too. I mean, again, this we're talking about CBD, not marijuana, and marijuana is, has the, you know, the psychoactive properties that that just CBD does not. But still, um, I mean, marijuana is becoming legal everywhere, and it's sure. legal in mass. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but it's and it's so funny. But yet there are some jobs like playing in the NFL where it's not okay. Right. Right. You know, so right. even if you play in Massachusetts or Maine or whatever. Exactly. Kelly says um, she says. Certified organic CBD, USA Farm, no GMO, vegan. She says she's been migraine free since starting it in March. I'm curious. Well, how much? How much do you take? Uh, just yeah. because I'm cu I'm curious about it my, myself. Is it like w one pill a day? Is it in milligrams? Ha yeah. How much do you take? Is it in candy form? Yeah. Hmm. Taking it right now. Welcome back, everyone. And Spirit Airlines has some new solutions for communicating with travelers. Yeah, starting next week, the airline is going to allow travelers to book and change reservations by text. You have to use the platform WhatsApp to do it. So customers will first interact with a, a chat bot. You've done that before, probably, and that provides basic information about your request. But then a Spirit agent would take over using texts to book airline travel. Not really widely acceptable yet. And there is an extra cost for using this new service, by the way, it's 25 bucks. So how much of your free time is spent on the internet every day? A new report says Mainers spend an average of an hour and 24 minutes a day on the web. That ranks 28th in the country. Verizon specials found this information, but it's important to note they excluded internet use for work and other household actions. Okay. So this is strictly for entertainment purposes. The state with the most time spent is Alaska clocking in at two hours and 46 minutes a day. That certainly makes sense on days when there are only five hours of daylight. The state with the least amount of time was Delaware with an average of 43 minutes. Interesting. Yeah. I, I would have thought it would have been more. Right? Is that what you, you thought too? Yeah. Yeah, I would have thought it would have been a little bit more, two and a yeah. half hours, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look at it again real quick. Have you ever used CBD? Uh, yes for pain. Not too many people for anxiety. Uh, but some people for, you know, get both, but uh, the majority still have never used CBD. I do think that is going to change. I think so, too. Coming up, knowledge is power. We have some tips for incoming college freshmen to make sure they get the most out of their big life change. Yeah, we're going to see what Keith's forecast looks like, too. That's later on. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not happy at all. But there's nothing they can do about it. I love it. So I think we get to stay at the monitor actually. Oh really? Um, People are slave drivers. Kelly says one milliliter per day, oil under tongue. Okay. So it, uh, is that the same kind of stuff that you can also put in your tea probably too? Or I whatever. I would imagine. Tea, coffee, one milliliter. So that's not much. That's no. a teeny little bit. I wonder too like you have to build up, like, will CBD, will you feel the benefits of CBD uh, the first time you take it, or do you have to take it several times in order to, like, build that up? I don't Good know. Good question. Yeah. I don't either. I don't either. I don't know. Because I know, like, we have these, <laughs> feel free to weigh in, <laughs> but yeah. pet owners, but we have these uh, composure vitamins for our Chihuahua, Tito, because he gets very stressed out. Anyone with a Chihuahua knows they are very stressed little dogs. And, um, but you know, we give it to him once and it doesn't do anything. But if we've given it to him like a few days in a row, it, we see a change. Okay, got it, got it. He bites. <laughs> this is not a CBD thing, but you're just wondering if no, it's a similar reaction. Exactly. Kind of. Yeah. It. And I know all pet owners will have different opinions about what to do and how to treat their pets and how to teach them mm. good behavior. But <laughs> we have. 
you're at wit's end and this is what you're doing. Huh? Yeah, there are times where he, and it's mostly in the winter. I think he has some seasonal issue going on. Because huh. in the summer, he's fine. But the winter time, he bites um, whenever you know, I try to take I, him out. By March, I bite. <laughs> yeah, don't we all in Maine? Right. <laughs> oh, <coughs> I love it. Nicholas says it takes about two weeks to build up in your system on average for okay, CBD. Thank you for that. Thank you. Interesting. Okay. Of, of everyday use. And then um, Patrick says he's a Giants fan, but he respects Gronk's decisions. Mm. It's his life. And he needs to take care. Boy, there's so much back and forth about if he'll come back in the middle of the season. And he has not ruled it out. He hasn't. He has not ruled it out. Um, he says he feels really good right now, but he's lost so much weight that I wonder if he, he can take tiny. the beating. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight. Yeah. yeah you could tell in his face mm. and his, mm. his whole build. Stand by. All right, back with more news. It is estimated one in three women and one in four men will experience domestic abuse in their lifetime. In Maine, a domestic violence assault is reported to law enforcement every two hours and five minutes. This is according to the Department of Public Safety. Nationwide, only 10% of domestic violence shelters accept pets. And for the first time in Maine, there's now a shelter that does allow pets. It's part of a larger effort to help more shelters become pet friendly with a little help from someone with a big name. It's all hands on deck at the Safe Voices Domestic Violence Shelter in Androscoggin County. From a fresh coat of paint to a new doggy door and ramp to the dog run outside. For the first time, the 17 bed shelter will now be able to allow pets. We know that about 80% of folks that are experiencing domestic abuse and violence, um, their pets are also being abused and harmed. And so we wanted to make sure that there was no barrier to people fleeing um, those situations and coming into a domestic violence shelter. Safe Voices is the state's first pet friendly domestic violence shelter thanks to a grant from three groups working together. Purina's Purple Leash Project, Rescue Rebuild and Red Rover. Together it's their goal to make sure there's at least one pet friendly shelter in every state by 2020. At Safe Voices the new additions are bridging the gap for survivors with and without four-legged family members. Not every Everybody um, has a dog or a cat or wants to be um, sharing a room with one and so by a, by being able to get this project happening here um, we were able to set up the rooms so some will be pet friendly. A project that's getting support and good old-fashioned elbow grease from a celebrity. We put up the bamboo fence, the chain link. TV, radio and podcast host Maria Menunos spending the day Tuesday at Safe Voices. There's a, a basement area with kennels and they kind of exit through there so they had to move the stairs from over here to here. For Menounos, it's a combination of two causes close to her heart. I've been working with domestic violence for a long time and also uh, with pets. And I know firsthand that they're caretakers and they're healers and the bond that pets and owners have. She's now broadcasting the message that there's a need to provide safe spaces for both survivors and their companions. It's a good feeling. <laughs> Safe Voices is one of nine domestic violence shelters across the state through the main coalition to end domestic violence. If you or someone you know is in need of help, call the statewide domestic abuse helpline at 1-866-834-HELP. You see the number at the bottom of your screen as well. All right. That's nice. All right, Keith is here. It's nice outside as yeah. well. It is. Uh, Keep it rolling. Good day to be doing some work outside. Yeah, you know, we only have really one half a day of, of tough weather this week and the rest is pretty good so okay. and a lot of that will fall overnight so okay. that that uh, kind of timing wise works out really well we'll talk about it though because we do have some pretty big downpours uh on wednesday night i just wanted to point out morning lows look at freiburg 43 this morning wow. and then look where we ended up 80 wow. so you think about the swing there of 37 degrees and we talked a little bit about this yesterday that is a a real hallmark of a fall pattern is the huge shift between morning lows and afternoon highs you just don't get them as much uh, other times of the year as you do during the fall or what feels like fall right now. Our buyer forecast looking pretty good overnight tonight nothing really going on probably start tomorrow with 
partly cloudy to mostly sunny conditions, but clouds start thickening during the uh, late morning into the afternoon, and then here come some showers and thunderstorms on Wednesday night. Now you'll see a lot of yellows and reds in this picture, and there'll be a bit of a fire hose effect, I think, along the coastline through early Thursday morning before we clear out midday or so on Thursday, and the rest of Thursday afternoon is good, Friday, and uh, at this point, the weekend looks good as well. But the setup is such that what is uh, going to be probably a tropical storm, it's currently a depression, Tropical Storm Erin is going to go out to sea, no question about that. All the models are doing the same thing with this system. But what's going to happen is this cold front that's ushering the storm out to sea is going to be kind of juiced up by that tropical moisture. So it's advecting its moisture to the cold front. And that's why Wednesday night, Thursday, we're going to have some really tropical high moisture downpours in through early Thursday before this whole system moves out. So as a result of that, we're looking at in some cases two to two and a half inches of rain in a relatively short period of time. Now the good news is we've been pretty dry, so it will take a lot of rain to cause flooding. But the best chance, at least uh, based on what we know right now, will be over down East Maine. So the National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch there already for tomorrow night and into Thursday. Uh, but again, good news is we're not saturated, so it will take a lot of rain to cause problems. That's really it. So it gets interesting just for an overnight there. And then uh, Friday looks okay. There's a mountain sprinkle on Friday, but most of us are dry. And then the weekend looks good. Mm -hmm. I will tell you the models were trying to kick us back into the upper 60s on Sunday. I held at 70 just mentally and we'll see <laughs> where we're at. But really, really similar to last weekend where it's generally pleasant, but it definitely on the cool side, you know, during the day and uh, in the morning. Uh, no big heat that I can see. You know, September has a has a way of sneaking a few back yeah. in there. Yeah. But uh, right now, not there. Not safe to take the AC unit. No, 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 no. no, but that 43 in Freiburg this morning, holy smokes. That's, yeah. that's cool. Uh, that yeah, actually, cool. Berlin, a couple of mornings ago, Monday morning, 39. Yeah, that's just not okay. Wow. That's yeah. not okay. <laughs> Keith, thank you. <laughs> well, despite those temps we were just talking about, we are in the last week of August, which means it's time to go back to school. Yeah, so for college freshmen, they're starting a whole new journey. So tonight, Chelsea Bard is going to give us some tips on adjusting to your new surroundings. Yes, congratulations, you graduated high school, you crushed your summer, and now you're just getting the last minute details together before you head off to college. And this new adventure can be so exciting, but the whole process is a little daunting, let's be real, right? And there's a lot of things that you're probably running into that you didn't know, you didn't know, I guess? But that's okay, here's some adulting advice to help you get started. And to help me, I've recruited my friend, Rachel Philander from the Adulting School to help you walk through it. Tip one, pick your head up from your phone. I know you've heard it from your mother a million times, but college is definitely the place you're gonna wanna do this. Just pick your eyes up from your phone. Especially if you're totally unfamiliar with your new campus, you gotta get a lay of the land. And this way, you won't be late for class and you'll get a sense of how to beat the lines in the cafeteria. But more importantly, you're going to want to make some eye contact with new people, and this is why. Make new friends. There are tons of other people in the same situation as you who know no one, who know nothing, who can't. You Just remember, you're not alone in that. And truthfully, the friendships you make in college are the ones that are the most helpful to you in your life, and they're the ones that last a lifetime. Tip number two, don't spend a fortune on books. When you're going to school, one of the biggest rudest awakenings is finances, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the things that you can spend money on, that you should spend money on, that you shouldn't spend money on, books? Personally, I rented my books. I knew many of the ones I needed for class were not ones I would need once the class was over. Plus, it's a lot cheaper and it's super easy. Tip number three, learn who your professors are. Before you even get into the classroom, check out who's going to be teaching you, and you can check that out online. You really have to understand whether it's a problem or whether it's adversity. You need to face adversity. You need to solve problems. 
and those are two different things. I'm not saying drop the class just because the professor is hard, but pay attention early on to whether this person is actually trying to help you succeed. Some professors are just unnecessarily stubborn. You can check out your professor at ratemyprofessor.com. Tip number four, it's okay to ask for help. Look, you're about to have a lot on your plate. Yeah, college is awesome and you're gonna have some of the best years of your life, but they're also kind of the hardest. So whether it be school related or personal, reach out for help when you need it. Once you leave or go and move on from your house, there's gonna be a lot of lessons and it can be totally overwhelming and that is okay. So get ready to learn a lot. You're gonna have tons of fun and make sure to take care of yourself. With some quick tips for the incoming college student, I'm New Center Maine, and Chelsea Bard. All right, we'll keep this rolling too on uh, New Center 530. We're going to see how teachers are getting ready for the school year, and there's a trend that is uh, helping lower the amount of money that they spend out of pocket on supplies too. Very important. Mm -hmm. A lot more coming up on New Center Maine at 530. Meanwhile, let's check in with Cindy for more. Hey. Hi, guys. Scientists are keeping a close eye monitoring an algae bloom that has popped up in Casco Bay that could hurt marine life. We want to show you the video of this because you, it's really easy to see the water is so discolored here. We're going to tell you where the bloom is and exactly what the danger is. And there has been a boom in small businesses in Bangor. Nine new establishments there just since midsummer. We're going to see what the owners find so encouraging and appealing about the area. It's all coming up at 530. Back to you. All right, Cindy, sounds good. We'll see you guys at 530. We're back with pulse results and brain drops when we come back. Brain drops. Brain drops. Brain CBD drops. <laughs> I just realized, like, not long ago, that brain drops is rain drops with a B. And I'm like, that makes sense. <laughs> it took me till like, a year and a half of working here to realize brain drops is rain drops with a B. Yeah. So it makes sense. Yeah, well, it's clever. I know. I don't know where I was, but I was like, this makes sense. It now clicks. <laughs> uh, I always thought brain drops, like I thought of the emphasis on the word brain because you, you like blow my mind sometimes. Um, I told you what I wanted to call it and they wouldn't, they wouldn't go for it. Uh, can you say that on Facebook Live? What is it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What'd you talk want? nerdy to me. Oh, talk nerdy. Yeah. That's what I wanted to <laughs> <laughs> Didn't happen. Could you ever use that for like a headline for something? Sure, but it would be a better segment. Can you just picture the, the intro now? Yeah. yeah. People were clicking on your brain drops yesterday. It was on Chartbeat today. Thunder and Lightning. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, Thunder and Lightning. Well, we got a, we've got a brain drop set section now on the website. This is big deal. Oh, that's actually a big so deal. They go, they get put in there. So. Okay. Yeah, okay. Good. Talking nerdy to me. <laughs> yeah. I love I thought it. I was brilliant, but it did not pass. Okay, it's a cool. Cool, thing. sweet. What is brain drops today? It's just uh, Pew Research did something on like how much do people trust scientists? It's oh, surprisingly positive. So really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Interesting thoughts on the algae bloom that Cindy was just talking about. Oh, I didn't hear in Casco it. I'm Bay. Sorry. Um, apparently there's an algae bloom in Casco Bay that's like ca causing the discoloration from, you can see from the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to have a story on it at 530. Hmm. Is this the algae so. that your dog? No, yeah. that's the blue stuff. That's right. blue green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not to be it's confused with Bill yellow. Green. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Stand by 10 seconds. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. One last check of the Pulse Poll tonight. Over half of you saying that you've never tried CBD or CBD mm. products, and 20% say that you have tried it for uh, anxiety and maybe some pain. It's actually more people than I would have thought so far that have used it. Sure. Yeah, for a relatively newish idea. Yeah. All right, brain drops today is uh, 
pretty straightforward. I like to quiz you some days, so I'm going to keep it easy on you. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I like <laughs> going to Pew Research. They got a wide variety of, of topics, but uh, today's was interesting to me. It was majority of Americans say science has a mostly positive impact on society. So this is good news because um, you know, we've talked before about how there's some selective science questioning that goes on in, in current uh, times. But in general, people still feel like it's a good thing. And uh, they rated their science knowledge as high, which we could bring them on the show and see if this is accurate or not. But 89% uh, felt they had <laughs> uh, high uh, knowledge and, and it was mostly positive. The other thing is this is somewhat situational as to what your field is. And the we talk about this a lot. People trusted open availability data much more than funded by industry sure, group. And we talked sense. about this. It doesn't make it bad. There are a lot of legitimate studies that are funded by someone who's hoping for a certain result and it's still non-biased, mm -hmm. but it just doesn't set off the right spidey senses for most people. So they're kind of on the right track here. Uh, the federal government though had a negative overall connotation, which is interesting because I don't know if that's new. You usually think of that as a, as a fair place to be sure. funded from. But anyways, independent and public is what people want to see in science, which is fair, transparency, big these days. Very telling. Yeah. Cool. That does it for us. New Center Arena 530 starts right now. Adios, Facebook. We'll see you tomorrow.